welcome to Art with Anna. Today we are talking about an artist named Takashi Murakami. And he is a Japanese artist, meaning he is from Japan. Um, and he was born in the 60s and is still alive today. Um, he has kind of coined his art with the term super flat, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but first, let's talk about the supplies that we will need moving forward for this project. So. You will need multiple colors of construction paper, a pencil, pen, or anything really that you can write, a sponge brush, glue, scissors, multiple colors of paint, a dish or cup for water, and something to use as a palette. I'm just choosing to use a piece of cardboard. Takashi coined his art with the phrase super flat. That kind of comes from a lot of his theory of his art. So his art is based a lot on blurring lines or crossing boundaries between juxtapositioning things, such as he likes to cross the line between super modern pop art and traditional Japanese artwork. He also likes to cross the line between Japanese style of art and of film and cross it with American styles of art and film. So he gives the example of Star Wars. The beginning credits of Star Wars, already the movie is three-dimensional um, in a three-dimensional way, right? The letters are kind of moving through space and it looks very three-dimensional. Then he compares that to anime, which is a style of animation in Japan. And he talks about how flat anime is even though you can see that things are stacked and there is dimension, they're flat drawn characters that move across. Now this is something that kind of goes against each other, 3D and 2D, right? Um, so for a lot of his art, he focuses more on the 2D aspect of it, but he likes to layer things to make sure that there's still some sort of dimension and three-dimensional aspect of it. So super flat is how he does his art. One example of this is a painting that is known as acupuncture painting. Now he has a few of these in the series and they're all comprised of small squares, just super flat laid on the canvas, usually on a square canvas. So it's a bunch of little squares on squares. Um, and they look like pixels. So that is his first piece of artwork that we'll look at right now. So here's the artwork. This one is acupuncture, but it's also called um, terra vert, which is just a type of green. So it's like taking a chunk or a pixel out of an animation um, that probably is in three dimensional and flattening it to just its flat pixels. Um, and he chose green here. So for part of our project today, we are going to cut strips of paper and cut little squares out of them, out of, doesn't have to be green, but any color of paper that you choose. So let's grab some paper and let's start cutting out strips and then squares. And let's actually pick two different colors of paper to do this with. Um, I will be choosing pink and purple. So I'll be choosing pink and purple. You choose what two colors you would like to use and we will get cutting out our squares. All right, so I am taking a sheet of construction paper and I'm just folding it into these rectangles. And if I just cut a little bit off each end um, where the folds are, then we should have just like two cuts to make a bunch of different strips. So I'm gonna start with that, just cutting off the ends. So I've cut 
cut off each fold and now I'm left with a few still together, but quite a few separate strands of paper. I cut these two in half. So we have our strips of paper. That one got kind of wonky. And our next step is to just simply cut squares out of them. So I'm stacking them, moving my scraps to the side, and we are cutting squares. And I'm going to repeat this with the pink. All right, once you have a good amount of squares, we're going to just take a background, a uh, piece of paper, any color you want, doesn't really matter. And we are going to cover it in the squares in just a random order. If your neighbor or whoever you're making art with is um, has also cut out a bunch of squares and has enough to spare. You can add a few of their colors also to yours. Um, but let's get started gluing on squares. All right, now I have my square of squares and I've cut off the excess to make it more square than a rectangle. So you can orientate this however you'd like. Um, I like mine like that, so I'll keep it like that. So now we're gonna talk about the second artwork that we will be focusing on and adding to this artwork. All right, the next artwork by uh, Takashi Murakami that we are going to look at and focus on today is called Warm and Sunny. So it is this um, painting here. You'll see the background is still squares, so that's why we've made our squares right now. We're gonna use it as the background of this painting. Um, the squares and like a gold background is kind of a traditional type of artwork and especially in Japanese traditional artwork, there can be a lot of gold. So that's an aspect that he took from more traditional art um, as well as the cloud in the background, that kind of like bubbly looking cloud. That's a very Japanese style of um, painting clouds is to be bubbly like that. Again, a very traditional type of painting in Japan. Now he likes to juxtaposition uh, quite a few things, but right now he's putting against this more traditionally gold background with this traditional cloud, these prints of very pop art flowers, which is something he's really known for, these flowers. He does a lot, a lot of prints of these flowers. Um, and as you can see, everything does look very flat, but the way that they're layered on top of each other gives them a little bit of dimension and gives the idea of three dimension even though it's more of an anime flat style of doing things. So we are going to make some clouds. So we will need white paper um, and we'll just kind of be cutting out kind of like bubbles to make our clouds um, out of white paper. And then we will focus on making some flowers. Now in the middle of these flowers are smiley faces. That's the pop art side of it. There is typically a ton of florals done in Japan um, and traditional Japanese painting. So this is kind of homage to that, but with making it a little more fun, kind of crossing that boundary of fine art and pop art and making a blend of something kind of in between. So let's get started on cutting out some kind of curly, circularly cloud shapes. And we'll add that on top of our squares. And then we'll talk about flowers. All right, so I have my white sheet of paper here and I have a green colored pencil, but you can use any writing utensil that you'd like. And I'm noticing in the painting, Warm and Sunny, that um, most of the bottom is white and it kind of comes up into a cloud like at the top. So I'm remembering that my background is square and only this size, I'm putting it in the back. And I'm gonna wanna make these like bubbly shapes that come from the bottom and work their way up. Without going, I think I am going too high up. So I'm gonna edit that down a little bit. So I don't know, I don't think you can see too clearly my 
um, pencil lines. But there about is my cloud. Up here I went a little too high, so I'll be cutting that part off. But I just made this bubbly cloud I'm gonna cut out and then paste right on top of my background wherever I'd like. All right, so I've turned my cloud over so that you can't see any of the green lines that I drew on it. Um, and I'm gonna put glue on the side with the green lines and I will paste this down. All right, so I have my acupuncture S style background and I've got my traditional esque style cloud. So now I, the next step is going to be simply to make stems. Um, let's make just a few stems, like maybe five, um, and we'll put flowers on the top of each of them. And then in the center of each flower goes a smiley face. So, um, and then a few leaves too to cut out. So I'm going to grab green construction paper. I'm just going to cut out some straight lines that can be used as stems. We do want them to be varying heights, so uh, you want some to be longer than others. Short one and a long one. Do right about in the middle. Another short one and a long one. So we'll want to put a few of them really close together because we're going to want our flower to overlap to sh show some dimension. Already we're showing some dimension by putting our flowers in front of the clouds, um, but another step will be to choose one of the flowers to overlap the stem of another flower to show some dimension. So our next step will be cutting out some circles out of construction paper. All right, so I'm choosing blue and yellow to be the centers of my flowers. I do have five flowers on my background, um, stems on my background. So I'm going to make the centers of the flowers by just cutting out some pretty substantial circles. So the centers of these flowers need to be big enough that we can fit a smiley face in them. Um, so they're pretty big in comparison to the petals. So I'm going to cut out just a few good sized circles. I'm thinking about the size of a quarter, or silver dollar would probably be the right size. Because I'm a human and I'm cutting out circles just by hand, they're not going to be as perfect as uh, Takashi's circles are. But here I have two of them that I've just cut out. That's about a good size. Um, I'd say it's a little more silver dollar sized. You can go a little bit smaller to quarter size, but I want to show you how we're going to be layering our flowers to show dimension. All right. So I have two of our centers here. I'm gonna put a center of one flower up here. The center of the second flower down here is gonna overlap the stem of this flower. So now it does look like this flower is in fact in front of the other flower without showing any shadow um, or any dimension any other way than overlapping. So the next step is going to be to cut out enough circles for your stems and then to glue down your stems where you want them, glue down the circles where you want them, um, and then We'll meet back up and we'll talk about where to go from there. So while I'm gluing these down, I did want to talk a little bit about um, anime. Now, anime is a style of Japanese cartooning. Um, and in Japan, this is, it's very popular. And it's also can be popular in the United States. If you've watched Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! or Dragon Ball Z, those are all kind of examples of popular anime movies or shows in the United States. Um, something that is another kind of juxtaposition is in Jax Japanese culture, one of the most prestigious jobs you can get is um, to be a cartoonist, to draw these cartoons. So here we're making 
kind of cartoony flowers. And in the United States, that's not so much sought after, like that wouldn't be the top profession. Top profession might be like a lawyer or a doctor in the United States. Um, but in Japan, a cartoonist is one of the top. So here we're seeing, we're looking at cartoons from an American perspective and maybe seeing something that we think of as being more juvenile. But in fact, in a Japanese perspective, it's something that's taken very seriously. So it's just interesting how different cultures can put values on different things. All right, we're just about done now with my stems and my centers, and I've made sure to overlap one center um, over a stem. And we're also probably gonna overlap petals just with how close our centers are to each other. Um, so the next step is actually going to be to make or draw smiley faces in the center of your um, flower centers. So I am going to grab a marker, because I don't have one. That would be better, I think, for you guys to see than my pencil. And I'm going to draw eyes, but I am going to cut out different colored mouths. So let's meet up after that. Okay, Takashi, um, the eyes on his flowers are typically round, but they also have just like little triangles or flecks of light in them. So I'll leave some space for there to be light. So they're mostly black, but I have little flecks of light. Um, And I do that by just simply not filling in the circle all the way. Now at this step, you totally can just um, draw smiley faces and you can do your own style. This is definitely his style where it's more of a, a half circle that's open like that um, and in different colors. So you can feel free to draw different smileys. You could do your own smiley like that if you wanted to but we wanna do some happy, happy faces. So I'm going to take some of my leftover paper and glue that one on. Maybe glue that one on like that. So I've got my smiley centers. You get your smiley centers and we'll come back to do petals to finish off our project. Okay, so there's a few different ways we can make petals. The first way would be to draw out your flower. Um, we'll ignore the center, that was just so I got the size, right? Because we already have the centers on our paper. Now we can either cut out each petal and glue each petal on, or we can cut out each petal and use this as a stamp to, um, kind of sponge our paint through. Or we can do a combination of both where we cut out the petals, we do some like that, we do some stamping. So that's up to you, you guys can choose. I will do both so that you can see both options, um, but you can do either. Okay, so now I have cut out these from my stencil and I have left over the little petals. So I'm gonna both do a combination of gluing these on and using this. So I'll probably cut out a few more petals so I can do two flowers with actual paper petals and then do three flowers with paint. So I am going to cover up one of my circles and fold this down. I'm gonna use some paint and just use this as a stencil to get my flower petals down. In there. And I'm going over the center of my second flower. It's overlapping the center of it, and that is good. That's what's going to show dimension. So as I take this off, I now have a flower. And it is covering the face of this flower a little bit. That's okay. That's showing that it's in front of this flower. So second, I'm going to take these little petals I cut out from our stencil, and we are going to glue them on. 
I'm gonna use it on this yellow flower up here just because I don't want the center and the petals to be the same color. All right, so I've done one flower here and I've used the petals of that I cut out for this flower here. So I'm gonna do two more of the painted and then I'll do one more of the cutout just to make it a little more interesting. And then we'll have our final product. Um, but if we want to add leaves, that's also an option. I think I will add le le a few leaves to mine too to show even more dimension. So let's get finishing with our petals, then we'll move on to leaves and then we'll finish it up. So a simple way to cut out petals is I took one of my squares, that's a background color, I folded it in half, and now I'm just cutting out a petal shape, and I'll cut off the bottom. That leaves me with a few little petal guys. The bad thing is they're the same color as the background, so I'm going to do it on a flower that's mostly on purple so I can see the pink ones. So we talk about juxtaposition quite a bit in art, and I think the reason that that's used so commonly in art is because you're taking two different subjects that don't usually go together, and you're making a relationship between them. And it's causing you to think in a way that you haven't thought before, which just makes a painting interesting. Um, so I think that's, it's a way to think outside of the box, for an artist to make us think outside of the box, which I think is pretty neat. Whatever um, petals you paint on or put on last, those are going to be the one that, ones that are in front because there's nothing covering them, showing that they're um, find anything. All right, so these are my smiley flowers atop my cloud. The last thing I'm going to do is cut out just some petal shapes to put down there in different colors, um, just a few on each stem, and after that we will be done. <laughs> All right, well, this is my final product. All right, this is my final smiling flower um, project. See my happy little flowers, my cloud in the background, my stems. So I hope you just take away from this um, a little bit about culture, about how cultures can perceive things a little bit differently. Um, I hope you also take away that there can be a fun play between things that are opposite. They can sometimes go together and make you think about how they're different opposites, um, but how they also sometimes have things in common, um, such as traditional painting and pop art or three-dimensional visuals and two-dimensional, right? Um, it's just fun to think about the relationship between two things that seem to be opposing. Um, I hope you just had a good time learning about a new artist too, if it wasn't known to you. I am going to link below a coloring page of a bunch of flowers um, by Takashi because it's very therapeutic to do um, and they're fun and they're happy and it's, it's kind of a nice thing to do if you have some downtime to just color in some flowers. So I'll link that in the, video, um, in the description below this video and that's about it. I hope you guys made a cool little project and I hope you enjoy your day. And I'll see you guys next week with more Art with Anna.